Happy Crockin Monday, y'all. The holiday season is going full force, so we wanted to bring you a spread of a variety of recipes to use throughout your holiday season, whether you're hosting a party or going to a party, or you just want your house to feel like the holidays. You can use any of these recipes to help you get there. Yeah, I'm always searching for a treat to, for my kids, for their parties. We're always doing, you know, little parties with the kiddos and family friendly. Um, oriented party so any of these are great and if you're going to an adult party or hosting one that would be perfect, perfect too. So this uh, holiday scent that I'm about to do is perfect for just making your house smell good. Mine actually you can cook this however long you want to. I put mine in the slow cooker and I cooked it for three days straight so it's like an ongoing candle. Cool. Okay. I like that it's and it really just smells just like this yeah, the holidays. Just fresh it's just and, right there in your slow yes. cooker. And it's all, you know, everything is edible that we're putting in here. So, you know, even though it's got the, you know, strong smell in your slow cooker, once you wash your slow cooker and everything, your slow cooker is perfectly fine to reuse again. So yes. I do this in, I have a two quart slow cooker and I like to um, use about half this recipe and do it in a small slow cooker. It's like a little candle, but if you only have a big slow cooker, feel free to double the recipe and, and use the big one. So I have about four oranges here. Cranberries. It's also pretty too. Yeah. Whole cloves. So if you're hosting a party, this would be a great thing to have for yes. your guests to walk into and smell this yes. scent. Cinnamon sticks. And then you'll just want enough water to cover your ingredients. Oh, thank you for the vanilla. I didn't see that. Well, you can't go wrong with vanilla, no. right? How much of this do you add? Just for, for a slow cooker about this size, I would add about two teaspoons. A little drizzle. Yeah. And that's it. And look how pretty that is. Smells really good. So and you just, and actually you don't, you can cover this and cook it on high until you get the aroma going. And then I just take the lid off and um, cook it we'll and it just let it, let that smell. You can cook it on high. Actually, I found that if you cook it on high, it's more potent. So if okay. you switch it to warm, what I would do the is it's going to die down a little bit. Overnight, I'd put the lid back on, turn it to warm, go to bed, get up in the morning, turn Crank it back it to back high, up. make sure it's the water. You'll have to add water, you know, as it cooks down. But it's really pretty yeah. and it's going to so. make it smell like the holidays. So now I'm going to be making an, a great little appetizer that you can have for if you're hosting a party or to take to a party. I know at every holiday party, everyone loves that food that you can just yes. kind of snack on, grab one, but it's bite sized. Yeah, just walk by and grab. Yeah, sneak just it, pop it, pop it in your yeah, mouth. There you go. So we're going to be doing some jalapeno pinwheels. I love the whipped cream cheese spread. You don't have to let your cream cheese um, get to room get temperature. Soft. Yes, it's just an eight ounce tub of that. So, get that done in the slow cooker. In my bowl, sorry. Then I have um, a cup to, you can use the full can of the cream of mushroom soup. Now this is going to make a little bit extra mixture. You're not going to use every bit of it. So if you don't want to put that whole can in there, you don't have to. And anytime we say cream of whatever, we've said this in the past, but feel free to use the less sodium or the fat free, whichever you like. Yes, or, or the if regular. You, if you don't like mushrooms, try the cream of celery. Swap it out. And you can also make these homemade. Um, yes, check out definitely. our website for a way to make those cream of soups at, in your home. This is about a half a cup of chopped jalapenos, the jarred kind, not fresh. That might get a little too spicy for you. <laughs> and then uh, about a cup of shredded cheese. It can be shredded cheddar or it can be a blend, but it does need to be pretty finely shredded. So you're going to get this Mix mixed up. up. And this is a lot like when we've made cinnamon rolls in the past right. and when we've done things like that. You're going to just have two um, 
rolls of the refrigerated crescent rolls. You're going to put this spread down in there. I would do this pretty thick because once the crescent rolls cook through, it, if you do not put quite a bit of the mixture, it will tend to taste a little more doughy. If okay. you want to have that cream cheese flavor come out, you need to do it pretty thick. That's a good tip. So, yeah, because it doesn't look like that much crescent roll until it, it bakes. So, you're going to get that on there. And it might get a little messy, but that's fine. If you'll spray the slow cooker for me. And you might um, use close to all of your mixture. You're going to use two cans of the crescent rolls. So I'm going to take a little bit of each one of these. This is just one, right? This one is just one can roll. and I've pulled it into four different um, rectangles. rectangles, yes. So. Just like we did with the cinnamon rolls. Just roll them. Yes, we're going to roll them from end to end, and then we're going to slice them in a little pinwheel. So if you'll help me out with sure. that. Like I said, don't be afraid to get messy. And you can slice these about, um, you know, an inch thick. You can do about four or five slices per um, quarter. You could do a whole math lesson with your kids here with this. Yes. <laughs> you have each tube has four yeah. rectangles and each rectangle has four slices. And then so just place them down in there with the, the swirl spiral. on top. Uh, yes. Okay. And you're just going to squeeze them in. The two cans of crescent rolls will fill the entire bottom of your slow yeah, cooker. So even though they're going to swell, you can still touch these. Yes. You can just. You're, they're going to have to be touching in order for it all to awesome. fit. Yeah, so once you get that down in there, I have a half a stick of butter melted with a couple teaspoons of the minced garlic refrigerated. You're just going to brush a little bit of it on it to lightly coat it. Just the top. Mm -hmm. You're going to cook these, cover and cook on high for about three to three and a half hours, probably more toward the three hour. You're not going to want to let these burn because they continue to cook once you turn that off. Okay. So brush it lightly. You'll have some of this left over and at the end if you want to re-coat them with a little more garlic and butter you can do that. That's good. So get your, I like things with a little kick but I still think you would enjoy these even though you don't like spicy. They're not oh, too I'd, hot. Definitely. They're so, really good. And, yes. You know they're just cute. They're cute just little, little bite, bite size pieces. And, I love them. Know, it's perfect. Lots of different things. We're going to be showing some other um, yummy treats to get you through those parties. <laughs>
whatever you just have it waiting for you and everyone can serve themselves have yeah, some little yeah. toppings if you want and definitely you're not sitting there having to be in the kitchen the whole time you can enjoy now um, I don't want y'all to be alarmed if you've never mixed cocoa like this before sometimes it doesn't it doesn't look like it's mixing it looks like it forms little balls on top but it will be fine it will um, you'll just whisk it and it cooks right in. You're gonna add your milk, the milk chocolate morsels. Not semi-sweet, do the milk. About a cup and a half. Let's get those in there. And kind of stir them up. And then Looks you'll good. cover and cook this on low for about two hours. You're basically just melting that chocolate and you'll want to whisk it every now and then during the cook time and then you can turn it to warm and anytime any it kind of will kind of like the pumpkin spice latte it will form a, just a tad bit of film on top but just whisk it in and it's perfectly fine and this is a rich hot chocolate it is you know me well, and my chocolate brand and whipping yes, cream really make I, it i love my chocolate so I'm going to be showing you a couple treats and one of these is going to go hand in hand with the hot chocolate. So what you can do is take the giant marshmallows, um, they're jumbo marshmallows, very large, not just what you would think would be the large ones. Keep looking, they get bigger. You're going to get a soft peppermint stick. We find them, they're just called bobs, they come out around the season. Um, Little the box. holiday season, yes. If you cannot find these, sometimes they are hard to find, you can use a peppermint stick, like a, a candy cane, I'm sorry, and just break off the curled part of it and stick it in. It yes. will work, but these are These are so good for perfect. the drinks. Mm -hmm. So, also, here's a little trick. Um, every holiday we like to do some type of treat, as Nicole was saying, and a lot of that involves melting almond bark. We like to do it in our slow cookers because we're not having to constantly microwave to keep it melted. Right. So if you keep it on warm in your slow cooker, throughout making your treat, it stays melted for you. Now we like to do it usually in a smaller slow cooker because the chocolate doesn't take up a lot of space. But if you don't have a small one, you can do it in a large. We have little bowls inside the slow cooker with both kinds of chocolate in it. So you put the chocolate in the little bowls, put it down in the slow cooker, and you can turn it on low until the chocolate's melted through. And you can also do different kinds without getting multiple slow cookers there you um, go. dirty. So it is a bonus there. So I'm going to dip these in white chocolate. You're going to dip it about halfway. And then up here we have different sprinkles. I'm going to reach up here and just get some red sprinkles on it. You can, this is something fun for the kiddos to do. They can hold on to that peppermint stick and it just, it looks so cute. And then I'm gonna do one with the little um, snowflake one because I think that's very festive. Nicole also made some yummy chocolate, um, Rice Krispie treats. So we cut them larger than we would normally yes. cut them. I would say it's a Rice Krispie treat bar. Yeah, it's more of a bar. But the, First of all, my kids love Rice Krispie Treats. They love marshmallows. And so anything I cook with marshmallows, they're gonna love. And um, so I thought, I'm gonna do these, you know, as a bar. And you just buy the little, uh, I call them pop sticks. They're in the cake decorating aisle. And they're sucker sticks. And- um, Or you could even use a craft stick, like a popsicle yes, stick. Yes, you can use pop- Put that down there. Mm -hmm. That would be really cute and give it kind of a crafty feel. You're going to dip these. We did these different ways. Um, this one we dipped in white chocolate, then we drizzled more white chocolate and put sprinkles after that first layer was dry. We did a layer of the chocolate, chocolate the and then we dipped it back in the white once this had hardened and then put sprinkles. So those are a great idea. So I already had two done here. I wanted to show you how this can go with Nicole's hot chocolate she made. You've got to have marshmallows with your hot chocolate, right? I do. So you can just stick the entire marshmallow down in your cup of hot chocolate. And it's going to melt and along with the peppermint. And you've got a great cup of hot chocolate. Yeah, there. and then the peppermint treat at the end. So that's a and cute little idea. We also thought with the Rice Krispie treats, you could easily bag these. I know these bags come in one big bag of like 25 for just a few dollars, if even that. 
and just bag them up and send them to a neighbor or your, you know your kid's favorite teacher classroom or treat classroom treat whatever or just keep it for yourself and snack on it well with the holidays gift giving you want to give something but you might not know what to give that certain person right. you can't go wrong with the treat no. food's always good and if you're going to be making these to display at a party and you don't want them to get stuck, you're going to want to put it on wax paper first until it dries and it will remove very easily. Then you can put them out on platters. This right here would be the perfect little treat bar at a party or for your kids' class yes, party. And I also suggest when you dip that first uh, in the Rice Krispie Treats, when you dip it the first time in the chocolate, I would put it in the fridge to dry. Just like we usually do mm -hmm. with our treats. But yeah, definitely use your wax paper. So Hopefully some of these recipes yeah, are going to make their ways into your home this holiday season. Hot chocolate. I know the hot chocolate will be. Mm -hmm. And one recipe that I'm really excited about this holiday is this fantastic crock and cheesecake. Who knew you could crock a cheesecake, right? That's right. We're very excited about it, but we're also really, really excited to tell you guys about our Crockin' for the Holidays magazine. It's sponsored by Bella's Slow Cookers, and it's on newsstands now, or you can get it on crockandgirls.com. Yes, it has 70 new recipes. Recipes not found in the cookbook or on the website, all the way from breakfast to dessert. We're hoping you bring the Crock and Girls into your home this holiday season. You won't be disappointed with all the yummy meals you feed your family. Happy Crockin', y'all. And happy holidays. <laughs>